Hi and thank you for joining me. In this video we are going to look at an important skill in functional skill maths and that is how to take information from a line graph and also all the things we need to do to create and complete one. <laughs> A line graph is really useful when we're wanting to display information or data about something that has changed over a period of time. To explain that, let's have a look at the graph in front of us. This is a graph which tells us about the temperature changes at the seaside during the day. Let's have a look at all the elements of the graph. Along the bottom here we can see the times of the day and up the side we can see the temperature in degrees Celsius. So the scale has the temperatures from 0 to 24 and the label tells us what it means. Similarly, the numbers across the bottom are the times and the label again gives us the meaning. Now let's look, take a look at the graph itself. These crosses are telling us what the temperature is at each time. So if we look at the first cross here and we look down the graph we can see this represents 8 o'clock in the morning and if we move across to the side it tells us that at 8 o'clock the temperature was 10 degrees. By lunchtime 12 o'clock we need to go to this cross here so that is the cross at 12 o'clock and again moving across the temperature is now 16 degrees. So if we look at the line itself and see the pattern, we can see that during the morning and up to two o'clock in the afternoon, the temperature has been rising. It has stayed level for two hours until four o'clock and then starts to come back down. So the line gives us a very clear indication of the temperature changes during the day. Now you can see that we are only given information about the temperatures every two hours during the day, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock. But the really useful thing is the line itself gives us the chance to estimate what the temperature might be at other times of the day. So for instance, if you were asked what was the likely temperature at 11 o'clock, well 11 is in between 10 and 12, so using the 11 o'clock line here we can go up to the graph and then take a line across. Therefore we can estimate that at 11 o'clock the temperature was about 14 degrees. And to use another example, if we wanted to look at 9 o'clock at night, 2100 hours, that would be between 8 and 10. I can move up to the graph here and then move along and looking at the scale up the side, the temperature is in between 12 and 14. So at nine o'clock, an estimate of the temperature would be about 13 degrees. So let's take a look at how we complete a line graph. We start with a set of information. This could possibly have come from a tally chart or a frequency table. In this case, we have the rainfall that has fallen over a seven day period. So each row shows us the rainfall in millimeters for each day of the week. Let's make sure we have the graph set up first before we actually start putting in the information. So along the bottom we have the days of the week and don't forget the label to tell us exactly what they are. Up the side again we have the scale and we have to make sure that the scale has numbers that go high enough to fit all the information that we want to put in there. Again, a label tells us it is rainfall and in millimeters. Now that we are happy we have all the information, we can start to complete the graph. And first of all, we look at Monday and we see that there were five millimeters of rainfall. So we take the cross and we go up the line from Monday up to the number five and place the cross exactly there. We continue doing that through the graph. Tuesday is three millimeters, so again a cross, and we continue until we have completed the graph. 
Now that we have all the crosses in place, we can read the information from the graph. So for instance, if we want to know how much rainfall there was on a Friday, we look across to Friday, up the line, and we can see by reading across to the side there were 11 millimetres. If, however, you want to see the actual pattern more clearly and see how the rainfall changed through the week, then adding lines to connect each of the crosses gives us the pattern more clearly. We can see that after Tuesday, the amount of rainfall increased through the week until Friday and then dropped significantly to a much drier Saturday and Sunday. So to summarize, if you are asked to read information from a line graph, be sure you look at the two scales, in this case, the days of the week and the temperature, and be careful that you are drawing straight lines and reading across and down. If you are asked to complete a line graph, as well as putting in the crosses and the line, don't forget it is just as important to make sure you have included all the labels and the scale correctly in order that someone else can read it easily. So as you can see, quite a lot of detail goes into creating a line graph. If you are making your own, try to keep things nice and tidy, use a ruler and make sure the information is nice and clear. I hope you find that useful. If you do, please do hit the subscribe button either in the corner or down below. Leave your comments and hopefully I'll see you in another one of my videos. Thank you.